Okay, so I want to show you something that was really important uh, when I was working at a company as a hardware engineer and a Python developer. And I, I realized that no matter how much PCB design experience I had, no matter what I got done, no matter how much I simulated my components and how much I knew the design was going to work well, I was still at the mercy of the supply chain and getting my components in. So what I want to leave you with, if there's nothing you get from this video is to get your bill of materials in order. There's this thing called a bill of materials where you need to submit that in order to get your board manufactured and assembled. Okay. If you don't have that in, doesn't matter how much designing you do, it, you're going to have problems. And what you want to do is make sure all of your components that you need the most are in that bill of materials. Even I would say even before you finish your design. Okay. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can compile a bill of materials in the cleanest of ways so that your team can review it, you can take a look at it, and you can get the parts that you need in time and on time. I've had, um, I had a situation where I had to wait three weeks. We had to wait three weeks for a, a board that was already finished and fabricated, mind you. But because we went with the same manufacturer and they were the same assembler, and we most, most importantly, we ordered the parts late. Okay, we ordered the parts late, even though we had an initial good idea of when we needed the components. A fabricated PCB was waiting three weeks. We missed that project deadline for funding. And um, so you don't want to not know how to generate a bill of materials due to not knowing how to use a software or tool. So this is why I'm going to show you in Altium how to create a bill of materials. Getting a new product to market goes way beyond just the schematic and PCB design. Design collaboration between industrial, mechanical and electronics domains and with your customers and the ability to securely share key design elements with key stakeholders, no matter where they are, makes development, design review and release to manufacturing as smooth as silk. Anywhere the right design information is under the right fingertips, you get success. Connect with anyone and work from anywhere with Altium Designer and Altium 365. So first what you want to do is go into your schematic design. Now we know we need certain components. Let's say this component, this uh, MUX controller is in really high demand. You know, some manufacturer, some 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 rude person decided, oh, I'm going to buy all the last of the components here from TI. Although that's, you know, depending on the component, that's not the case always. But there are some components like inductors, special transformers, some terrible company or person is like, oh, I'll buy all the rest of these. I'm just kidding. You know, they're not terrible. But I'm just saying, you know, that can happen. That can happen. Um, so let's pretend that's the case for one of our components, right? What you want to do is... Even at the schematic phase, don't even wait until you're at PCB design and layout. You want to go into your schematic, then pull up this thing. So you would right click and add active bomb. Okay, you want active bomb, right? Then you can save your active bomb preemptively just to make sure that it's saved and you're working with something uh, viable. And then what you want to do is go in here and look at each of your reference designators, making sure it has the proper description making sure it has the proper name. Now, do you need to do all of this manually if you're using uh, software that isn't optimized for this? Yes, but with Active Bomb, there's so much you can do here. So for instance, you can click on any one of your components, right? Like this chip LED, and then choose to add a solution. You can edit the part choices in your library uh, if you want to. So if you can go into the library, see what solutions are available, choose to click add and say, hey, you know what? I need something that's similar or close to this device and is in stock. None of these are in stock. You say, ah, you know, man, what's going on? And then you click on one of these components there and you say, okay, let me see what I can do. Uh, see if any, any components are similar or close to this. Now what you can do is look at the alternatives and available substitutes and you go into your alternative and available substitute you go to similar and then you want to go ahead and click on a detailed description then what you would do here's the trick you would go and paste that detailed description into your search bar and then see if anything pulls up and then you can further like you can modify this if nothing shows up so for instance i just want a 600 424 
nanometer LED indication. Maybe I don't care about the the uh, wavelength, you know? Maybe I don't care about that. Maybe I care about just the color. And I was like, and I'm like, oh, this is in stock. Let me take a look. Then you click on here. And this is what I like about Octopart. If you're not using Octopart or um, other manufacturers to check up your components, please do that. Octopart combines all of them. And so what you do is you go and look and see if the detailed description more or less matches 625 versus 624, not bad. You can look at the data sheet and all that stuff. And then you would add that as a solution. You'd say, okay, I like this. And you say, okay, that's a solution. Then you can even rank these. You could say, oh man, this is a, this is a really good one. This is great, but not always in stock. And then this one is kind of in between. We, this, we'll get this if you don't, if you can't get that one. Then you click OK. All right. And then you can see your ranks get pulled up here and then modify them as needed. So it's dynamic. Gone are the days where the Excel spreadsheet is the way to do the bill of materials. You need something that's alive and ready and um, dynamic, something that's working with you in real time with real data in real time. OK, if you haven't seen it, check out my video where I talk about the big problem with using Excel spreadsheets to manage a bill of materials. Um, we need more, we need smarter ways to track our components because the, the situation is dynamic. Now let's take a look at this. We have a component here. And if you look on the right here, you see manufacturing part numbers, no MPN ranked. Mm, so that's a problem. So they want us to say, hey, which uh, manufacturer part number are you ideally wanting from this what's used what's not used you can set those kinds of things you can add more solutions just like I show you you can create a manual solution so this comes in handy when you have a local stock of this is what I used to do maybe you have a local stock at one of the companies I worked at as a hardware engineer or mid-level senior hardware engineer and then we had components from like 12 years ago that were no longer in stock but we had an abundance of them so we create a manual solution put in the details like the manufacturer part name, part number, supplier name, supplier part number. I would even sometimes, well, not sometimes, definitely have notes like in the description for our internal part number for the component and in our, in our internal database. So we were using an agile database at the time. The database is called agile. You can also create or edit manufacturer links. It's pretty much similar thing, right? Same procedure as before. And then you would look at the descriptions, it would automatically pull in the comment for that component into here, the search field, and then you can go through it there. You can also use this filter to filter and sort things by temperature, by surface amount, um, resistance, and all that stuff, the device you're looking at. So the problem is that this is not ranked, so I would rank this, and then hopefully that would go away. You can also state whether this is in a draft mode. You know, it lets you know what revision state it's in. Uh, that's important because if you have a control system, actually always in any company I worked at, there's always a control system. You'd have a component that goes into a draft state and then released, and then the version for that release. So version 1.0, vision one, revision A, B, C, and so forth for that component if it's a major enough revision. And that applies to not only components, but schematic sheets, uh, pages, um, designs, entire designs, PCBs, and all that. But I won't get into all that. You can have these columns that list all of the manufacturers, supplier part numbers, supplier subtotals, and the unit price and everything. So not only are your individual prices listed, you have your manufacturer part numbers, alternative options, you have your subtotals as well based on the quantities. Then you can go to your panels tab and choose properties that pulls up this panel and you can choose additional columns of information is is the thing compliant with rojas right is are you rojas compliant that's important especially if you need uh, certain certifications rojas certification for the entire system ul certification so that could be like a custom column that you would create what about width uh height of the device for the pcb in case you have in case you have a mechanical engineers on your team or whatnot who want to know the highest, the tallest device on the board before you even lay out the board. So you don't have to lay out the board to know what your tallest component is. There are so many things you can add in here. So you want to check this column 
to see what you can add in. And then you have the sources like PCB parameters, database parameters, document parameters, and Altium cloud services. Okay. We won't get into all that. These are where your information would be coming from. And uh, so let's go back to the general tab. We have the production quantity. How many of these assemblies, an assembly is the PCB plus the components on here. How many of these assemblies do you want to produce? And then that would be broken down into price per board and your order price. So it even lets you know your estimated order price for these components. Okay, you can also add new managed components or a custom item or custom row. Let's say you want to add like the PCB itself, right? So you would call it the um, PCBA, for instance. Okay, this one's a little tricky. Okay, this one's tricky. Okay, PCBA, there we go. And then it's whatever, you know, name you give it, revision 0 for 0 0.1 or A, a, if it's a major release that's approved, and then you give a description for it, and you say, okay, you know, high speed USB A to C converter, so on and so forth. What's the designator for it? You would call it probably PCB, a CMB or CMP dash zero zero blah blah blah, depending on your, you know. And then further here, you could put the revision type zero A whatever, if it's a managed component or device or or not okay because this would give you this row would have information about cost from the manufacturer to fabricate the pcb so you would include that as well okay i'm going to leave that in there for now let's go ahead and scroll down you could show not fitted components on here right if you're not familiar with not fitted or what that means there's a there are tutorials on how to do not fitted in my uh, schematic tutorial for Altium Designer. And then you can also sort out your designated group. So let's say you want your uh, assembly company needs to have your reference designators as explicitly listed, or if they want them to be listed like that, that is super convenient. So now you don't have to do like these small little scripting techniques and manually editing and updating these things uh, in Excel. Then there's bomb sets. Okay, do you want a bomb set one, bomb set two? How many, like, these are the different sets of builds of materials you want to generate in aggregate. Okay, and then you have bill of materials checked. Okay, so no manufacturer part rank. Are there any duplicate values? So this is a great way to check your, your, parts you're ordering, knowing how many you're supposed to be getting to the suppliers, okay, the supplier ordering from, all right, and it's really good to catch little mistakes when things don't come in and you have that situation where it's like, oh, well, I thought I ordered that thing, and it's like, nope, nope, didn't happen, all right, so um, this is a really good way to manage your bill of materials. Now, I've been doing a lot of talking. Let's go ahead and actually generate the bill of materials, how do you do that, right? So you would go to your reports and then bill of materials. Now you can choose the no variant version if you have variants in your design, or you can choose a variant version in your design. You would set your, you, you're gonna wanna use real time data, okay? But if you do have cache data that you want to work with, then sure. Then your file format, you could set that to tab delimited, uh, web page, whatever the case may be. Excel and then your template. Now this is where you would upload specific templates and there are some uh, pre-installed templates as well that come with Altium Designer so that's totally up to you. Typically you know maybe a dual supplier template would be good. You can add this to your project which I highly recommend this being the bill of materials. Add what was ever exported to your project that is your folder of files for this entire design and report bill materials violations in your messages. So you'd go ahead and export and then generate your bill of materials. Let's just do a you know, test here, and then you could do that. Um, you can also preview your bill of materials, but you know, after you, you're done exporting, so we're just gonna give it some time. All right, now we have an Altium bill of materials. Looks very professional. You didn't have to do a bunch of manual editing it has the color coding in there for you. There are hidden rows in here, like row 10. And, uh, you know, so take note of that in case there are values or information that you are specifically looking for. So you, you want to be careful or mindful of that. 
Um, there's an interesting post uh, on LinkedIn that I'll see if I can find the link that that gives some information on uh, hiccups you can run into in trying to find hidden variables to create your bill of materials or to modify a bill of materials that was generated. But this is how you do it, you know. Uh, this is extremely important. Always produce a proper bill of materials and use tools that help make life easier. Note, if you've been following along, it took you only a few minutes to create a bill of materials from a design. If things need cleaning up, though, of course, clean those up. But, it, you know, Altium makes it so easy. And then especially if you're using Altium 365, which I highly recommend using, uh, you can sync everything up in the cloud. Okay, thanks so much for watching and have a good one. Uh, keep on designing.